Cool. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you, Greg? Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me. Yeah, man. Uh, before we get started, I just got to ask: Is it like a pre before you're when you're a stunt performer? Is it like a prerequisite just to just to be like ridiculously cool? But I'm already like I'm never <laughs> kidding, but I'm like this guy's so much cooler than I am. So it's like, and I was looking. Uh, at I, I beg to differ. A, I'm sure we're just as cool as each other. I, I'm. If you are a comic book and movie buff fan who just loves awesome films and great action, then you and I are the same guy. I just got very fortunate to meet some of the right people and come from the right background. I mean, I was a, I was just a, a kid who got picked on most of his life and my parents said, you wanna try martial arts? And then, you know, I loved Jackie Chan and it was just, I like films and I'm just very fortunate, you know what I mean? To be able to be a part of what I've been a part of every day. I can't believe it's myself sometimes, I'm so fortunate. As I see the Spider-Man uh, on the back wall. <laughs> Yeah, man, you've been uh, yeah, you've been a part of some great films, all the Marvel movies. Uh, nobody's freaking awesome too. And then um, thank you, thank all, you. All and then so like you got to basically you get to work with Bob Odenkirk, and you got to turn an actor who's basically known for his comedy, like even Better Call Saul, those kind of roles, and you got to turn him into like believable. This is not like Keanu Reeves, where he's like he's always been doing action, and then but you got to so, like what was the biggest like what kind of training are you putting him through to make him into like a believable action star? I know that gun training isn't easy either. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about Bob Odenkirk was I didn't get him when he was a clean slate. In fact, when I was introduced to doing the project with the producing team, David Leach and Kelly McCormick at 87 North, they said, are you interested in doing this? I read the script. They said, Bob Odenkirk's the lead. And I said, Bob Odenkirk's the lead. Okay, that's very interesting. How much time do we have? And they said, you know, three to four months before we shoot. And I go, oh, I don't know if that's going to be enough time to get him where they go. They go, don't, don't worry. He's already been training for a year. I said, hold on, what are you talking about? A year. So it turns out, he, they connected him with this incredible stunt actor named Daniel Bernhardt, who was a fight coordinator, fight choreographer, who used to be the lead of Bloodsport 2 and 3, and many other projects. Works with David and Kelly and all, all the time he's been in all the John Wick movies. He comes to hit it off with Bob, they become friends, and they just start training on a regular basis, physically and in fighting and, and stunt choreography. So I talk to Daniel, and he shows me some videos, and I see that Bob has this aptitude for it, and he loves it. He's hungry for it. So much so that this story actually, I don't know if you know this, but something like this actually happened to Bob where people broke into his home and that's what drove him to create this story and this character. So it really meant a lot to him. Mm -hmm. And we just thought, okay, well, let me talk to Bob. Let me talk to Ilya. Let's talk to them all about, um, I was in the minute I read the script and saw the videos of Bob. We then created this visual language of how we thought he was gonna fight. We designed this, action set piece that was the bus we shot a little mini movie uh in a fake bus that we kind of built and pitched it to them after we talked to them about his character and the narrative and everybody loved it and said all right then we're going to take what we built in here extract pieces and moments and have daniel start working on it with bob and get more in tune with exactly the nitty-gritty that is as opposed to a general broad spectrum of physical movement um and then as we continue to build and design and choreograph these fight scenes and these action set pieces, we would send choreography over to Bob and say, all right, today you're going to work on this and you're going to do this and you're going to do this and you're going to drill it a hundred times. Um, and that was about the time, about four months out of the movie, Bob is finishing Better Call Saul. And he was training on the weekends with Daniel, training sometimes in the mornings before he went on set to Better Call Saul, which is incredible because he was filming some of those finales that you've seen that were super dramatic. Uh, he wraps it up goes back to LA, trains five days a week for two to three weeks, super intense, two hour sessions in the morning and an hour session later in the day, gun training, the same place that we that everybody goes, that the Punisher went and John Wick went, um, Terran Tactical, and was just honing. He had a physical aptitude for it at that point and a hunger, and a, a, a hunger to be this character. Then we arrived in Winnipeg about a month, two months out. And at that point, Bob is completely shredded and, already kind of knows all the pieces of the choreography. Now we're getting into the sets. Now we're getting the stunt actors he's gonna fight. And now again, in the set pieces, we're running it. We're running it, we're running it hundreds of times to the point that maybe almost two years up to the fact that we go to camera that Bob has been training, which is absolutely unheard of. So really by the time we went to, to camera, he was almost Keanu Reeves in a way that he had been training for so long that he could perform the choreography without actually having to think about what he was doing. It was like driving, you just drive. Um, and he was driving fully and he was so hungry and so visceral. He actually, I think 
trained for so hard and for so long, he actually thought to himself, maybe I should try to fight. Like maybe I, I wonder if I could win a fight. And that's why when you watch the bus fight, he looks so visceral because I tell everybody he shows up on the day to do the bus fight and he looked like a, like a lion who hadn't been fed or a tiger pacing in a cage um, ready to attack. Uh, and I told the guys, I said, look, I think Bob is like eyeing you. I think, I think he wants to fuck you guys up. I'm actually kind of concerned. <laughs> And sure enough, if you watch it, I mean, he just was spitting and sweating and ripping and angry. And that's what we wanted out of that fight in particular. He, he progressed to a calmer, cooler, found his groove. But in that, in that fight, it was the chance for him to let loose. And it was perfect because it was the first fight we shot. And after two years of training, he really got a chance to just get it all out there. And um, it w wouldn't have been what it was without him. So. Yeah, yeah. No, now that you mentioned, yeah, he really does channel something in that bus fight. And like, how long did it take to actually end up shooting? Like, from like choreographing everything, and then uh, like the actual like the whole process of start to finish. How long did that take? Well, I think the first thing we did was we saw Bob's strengths in his physical training. He learned everything from just basic punches and elbows and knees and kicks and jujitsu and judo. And we saw, you know, this is his strength. This is this. But actually, we'd rather have Hutch do this as opposed to just punching a guy in the face. We wanted him to brutally hammer them down. So we start teaching him this and see his aptitude for that. Um, I would say for nobody in particular, from the minute that we saw that and created our first stunt pre-visualization, which was the choreography of the bus, um, we had the luxury of time, which you usually don't. And that was about three to four months um, of honing and tuning and ever building. And then we shot beginning of October all the way through the end of December. And the finale, I mean, you know, from the minute we saw three, four months out from the bus fight, we had an additional two to three months before we did the finale. So that was just ever being honed, creating a laundry list of concepts and ever building them from shotgun shells and um, rat traps to wrapping a guy in barbed wire and sucking him out of a window to rebar and air cannons. You know, we just constantly came up with ideas that if we didn't use them there, we could use them there, we could use them there. There was things that we built fully that we fully expected to walk in on the day and use that we didn't because you know we were just ever evolving the concept. Um, but that was what was so great about Bob being so in tune with his physical nature that if we threw a curveball out of him at that point, I said, I don't want to throw this punch anymore, Bob, just skip it and go to the knee. We didn't have to sit and walk it slowly. He was just like, great, let's just go, I got it. And we would. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, time is a luxury on films, especially with a budget like this, you know, you might get a couple weeks, um, but produ the producers, David Leach and Kelly McCormick are action aficionados mm -hmm. and they understand what it takes to design action set pieces. And yeah, you could just throw a punch, but if you take the time to train your actor, and you take the time to create a narrative and a through story in the action set piece where they rise and they fall and they have moments where they stop and they breathe and you feel how tired they are, it takes time. And we, they give us that, those guys at 87 North. And um, David's a director and it was a stunt coordinator, second unit director. So he gets it, he knows. Um, and he wanted this to be that as his first producing, um, one of his first producing abilities with his co-producer partner, Kelly and his wife, didn't want it to be any less. And with Bob, that he knew what would be special was that it was Bob. That was what was special. So we couldn't, um, we couldn't shorten that, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah. And like, I know you've mentioned, like you're, you're, you've worked with David a lot. You're working with Ilya, yeah. uh, like directors like Sam Hargrave. I'm sure you've crossed paths with Chad Stahelski as well. And then yeah. like, when you're, uh, when you're working with, I, I talked to him once too. He's a real cool guy too. Um, but um, so Chad. you're working on these collaborative projects with these guys that know his action as well as you do. And versus like, what, how's that different? Like, how's that, how's that handoff different? They're like, they trust you to handle the stunts or like, is it more of like a collaborative process versus where you're like working on something like Avengers where you're working with like the Russos who are probably not as well versed in action as you guys are? Um, okay, so I would say that with David, because Ilya directing and Ilya has done some action too, the, I think it just comes with a level of comfort and trust and collaboration, as is anything. Um, David, Chad, and Sam, the difference with them being mentors of mine and friends of mine, the, the bar for all of us is set higher because it's what we do. Um, but I, I try to set that bar no matter, no matter what it is I do. But the best part about working with David and Ilya 
and Sam and Chad is that they continue to push the bar. So just when you think you've pushed the bar as far as they can go, they lift the bar and they go, now push it up there. And they're until the day, they're just ever evolving. So, they, but they're trusting that they know that you are going to go with the right mindset and say, we're going to knock this thing out of the park because that's what we're here to do. And we love it. Now the Russos, yes, earlier on, they were not necessarily action aficionados, but after Captain America Civil War, I mean, if you think about it, they had done two of the biggest, yeah. most profound action movies. Captain America Civil War. So um, I think I, my AirPod just died. Tell me if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. I would say that even with them, by the time we got to Infinity Wars and Avengers Endgame, they full wholeheartedly understood action and collaborated with us and trusted. I mean, that was 10 years of their life from mm. Soldier to... to Hey, uh, sorry, I think you just cut out a little bit. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I think that no matter who it is, whether you believe that they understand action or not, the key is communication and collaboration. And as a second unit director too and a, and a stunt coordinator, my job is that if you're with someone who doesn't understand that as much, it's to help guide them to make the right choices. It's not my job to take credit for it. It's my job to make the best product and say, Here's why I feel like what you're saying is great and we should do that and here's how we'll achieve it. Here's why I think this idea could be changed because of this and what are your thoughts on that? And it's just to ever help evolve the concept and the ideas. It's just the only difference with Dave and Chad and Sam is that they have fallen down, they have hit that wire, they have hit that wall, they have put that camera up, they have offered those ideas, they've been through every step of the process so they know what it takes and how many times it takes to do it and what equipment is required. So they can say, actually, no, I know that doesn't take a week. I know we can do it in a day. And it pushes you to just evolve and be more creative. Um, and so that part of it is exciting for that too, but it's also equally exciting to work with guys like Ilya and the Russo brothers who didn't come from the background of, of stunts because they look at it a totally different way. So it's two mindsets. You have an action mindset and they don't and you collaborate and you come up with this these other incredible ideas. So. I just think that I'm so fortunate to be a part of both because some people only ever get to work with one side of it or one side of it over here. And I've been beyond fortunate to work with both. And in a collaboration of both, uh, you know, I worked with Sam, who was the second director, some coordinator for the Russos. And then he moved on to direct extraction and now is moving on to direct other projects. And Dan, as, uh, I worked with uh, Dave and Chad when they were second directing and coordinating. So you get to just see, you get to just learn from the best and if you're um, if you're around the best, learning from the best, you can only hope to try to strive to to reach that level. I think. Yeah, you've worked on some awesome films, man. <laughs> um, but uh, so you've been doing like you like you said, you've learned from these guys, and, and like you started doing stunts. You were doubling for Chris Evans, Sebastian Stan. You're kind of moving now. You're like a stunt coordinator. Um, like, what kind of challenges does it present when you're like, doing a film with like these sort of con constricted, least tight action sequence like say like a um like nobody versus like on Hobbs and Shaw where you're doing these like massive set pieces what kind of challenges has that presented to you or like which ones do you find more difficult to sort of like realize I think that the first and foremost one that always lays in front of you is making sure that it suits the story the narrative and the character it doesn't matter how big it is if you're just throwing a punch nobody's going to want to watch it and nobody cares you have to connect the audience with the character. You have to create something extra special that involves the story and the person that you're watching. After that comes all the logistical challenges that come with time and money. Um, you know, when you're working on something like Hobbs and Shaw, you have all the resources, um, but you have other things up against you. It's super busy, incredibly talented actors like Dwayne Johnson aren't as equally as available as guys like Bob who are willing to come and train me every day because they need to be on set and they're running multiple businesses and they're gonna come there and they're gonna crush it, but um, it's they do action all the time. Whereas Bob, you know, the positive side is Bob hasn't really done action. So he was hungry to put it all on the table for the first time. However, um, you know, without as big of a budget and without a lot of time, you just hope that if you don't get someone like Bob who's just dedicated, who trained for two years, you just hope that you can get that actor for more than a week and make them look like they've trained their whole life. That's an extreme challenge, but also um, 
constrictions of sets, when you can get in the set, when you can test the stuns, you know, all those things against you that um, I think that actually a, a challenge that arises is problems create incredible challenges for me in that I don't think someone saying no means I'm not gonna be able to do it. It means how can I do it and make it just as good even though I have less resources. Um, and that in itself lies the challenge right there. You know, if I were to tell you to get on the internet and you don't have a computer, you're not gonna knock on the internet, you're gonna find a way. You just might not be able to do it with a computer. Um, how do I make Bob Odenkirk look like a badass action star with one week in front of me? That's happened in the past. Um, but again, uh, maybe the fight doesn't need to be 10 minutes long. Maybe the fight needs to be three beats long and that three beats need to be so great that that's what you remember. And that's all that matters. So it's not about the scale, the size, or the epicness. If you've got that, great. But if you don't remember what's the story, what's the character, you connect it to the character, and does it help the narrative? Is it a part of the story? Or do you just feel like you're watching a movie and then all of a sudden somebody starts fighting and then the movie picks back up? Nobody wants that. Yeah. No, it's always the challenge for me regardless. Yeah, well, I don't want to keep too long. <laughs> this has been fantastic. But I just had to ask you one thing about uh, a movie we barely know anything about. Um, What's it been like working on Bullet Train and working with Brad Pitt? Uh, I can't say much, but what I can say is that it's an incredible ride. The It's a wild, incredibly action-packed ride. Um, if you think nobody's great, Bullet Train is going to be just as great. They're, they're both too... It's you just gonna it's gonna blow you out of your seats. It's incredible. So I was again very fortunate to be a part of it. And Dave Leach as a producer for nobody is incredible, but as a director, it just makes the boldest choices and, and keeps it so fresh. Um Brad's a stud. He's uh he's the best. So you're gonna see him on top of his game, just like Bob. That's what we do. Awesome, man. Well, this is great. I pretty I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Great meeting you. Great meeting you. Take care. Thanks, Rowan.